Hello, hello, hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review, honey, of The Housewives of Atlanta. This is season 15, episode 7. Honey, everything trying to be Gucci, but it's not going to be Gucci because Marlo is a train wreck. Because Sonya is a flip flopper. Because Sheree is a professional line stepping, uh, side stepping, side kick for a check. I just feel like y'all are picking the wrong team. And not because anyone needs to be on like candy team, but y'all are picking Marlo. That's stupid. Sheree, you are a whole OG, was an OG housewife, trailing behind Marlo? Girl. I mean, if the check said put it in your pocket. Anyway, I hope everybody is having a great Monday. Happy Juneteenth. Because it's technically 2.43 in the morning right now. But y'all going to get this at around 3 p.m. Unless you're a member. If you are a member, y'all already know. Anything that's premiering is already available to y'all on the link. Okay, you always go to the, the community's tab. Okay, and you will see a members only video with no ads. So that when you're a member, you get no ads on all the premieres. Okay, but either way it goes, happy Juneteenth. Okay, to all of us around here. I'm off work today, but I will not be on camera until later on tonight. But let's get into what we can to get into. Y'all know, first thing first, if you have not done so already, take a moment. Okay, subscribe to my channel, like the video, comment in the comment section, okay, share the video, okay, like the video, okay, follow me on social media at Jimmy's Corner on IG, Twitter, and TikTok, okay, but guess what, y'all, I'm also here, hi, how you doing, how are you, anyway, let's get into, so, it was a good episode. Okay, I mean, Marlo still getting on all of our nerves, but that's what she do. That's her pleasure. Her pleasure is to piss all of us off, no matter what is going on. Okay, Marlo, in my opinion, is fake innocent for attention. She, she, oh, look, this is episode seven for at least the past five episodes. She has been saying all this stuff about Candy and the funeral and the flowers and the nephew and the, the person who did it. She all worked at, went to, met at all the stuff. she been talking cash money stuff, connecting Candy and her businesses to Pow Pow's. Now she want to change the narrative. I'm upset because I didn't get flowers. When you, you, girl, so what? Marlo is fake innocent for attention. Somebody get her a Snickers because she knows herself when she's hungry. Okay. Somebody get a lollipop because she's being childish. Okay. Somebody get Jesus on the main line because she need prayer. Okay. Now, Candy up here checking Marlo. Okay. And it went better than it did. Well, the last episode. Or her going off on Marlo, I like that too. That was pure aggravation, okay. And this here, with the time when she went off, this time is pure unbotheredness, okay. And can you don't trust Sandy? I I think a lot of people don't trust Sandy. I don't think Sandy trusts Sandy because she's a flip flopper, okay. So she don't know who to trust herself or herself. Anyway, let's get to it. Let's get to it now. A couple of new looks. I think it's just two. Okay, Sanya and Kenya. Mm -hmm. The Kenya, they don't trust each other. Okay, now I can't, I don't think this is an old look. I don't remember this look from her before. Science, I, I believe it's new. I love the curl, the ringlets. I love it. I swear to y'all, the moment I seen the outfit in my head, all I heard was under the sea. It made me feel like it was a fishnet. Okay, I'm like, is she catching fish? It's cute though. But I'm like, it does it look more like a fish net to catch fish. You throw it in the water and bring up the fish. Okay. Under the sea. Nothing is better. Where it is I'm so sorry. Anyway, 
but it's cute. I'm saying, you know, big hair, cute, you know, natural beat to the face or whatever. I don't need the earrings. The earrings are, are the earrings are a bit big, and to me, I feel like she didn't even need because the hair is so big and curly and cute. She didn't really need the earrings. Okay, I'm gonna leave that be. But at least she don't have on all the rings or bracelets or necklaces or whatever. I don't mind that earrings, but I also don't need them. But she look cute. Can you cute updo curls, boobs, color of the dress? Okay, it's real cute. Now, can you? Can you? I wouldn't mind your hair being pushed back. It's a whole lot of round here. But I also don't mind it because the, the dress don't have no sleeves, okay? So it's not as if her hair is covered up stuff. But I wouldn't have minded it if the hair was pushed back. We can still see the curls. Still see the curls, okay? But both ladies look great, okay? Now let's get to the story. Because I'm not going to hold y'all up because it is too... 48 in the morning. <laughs> and I want to go to bed. I got stuff to do tomorrow. Well, today, because today is today. Um, we see Drew. Drew meets up with a video director called Rage. I Googled him. I'm like, is he real? Is he a real director? And he is. I, I Googled him. He's done a whole, whole, whole. Like, he's a, a lot. A whole. I said, okay, he's a real person. Okay, cool. Anyway, he's done a ton of work with all kind of artists over the years, okay? Now, they worked at the back in 2008. Man, what video was it? Was it the A kind of guy? I can't remember. On somebody's video, whatever. Okay, but she wants him to direct her music video for the Already No. I like the song. I feel like she's not doing enough to push the song. Like, you should be you should be booking shows and doing opening acts, doing your song. Like, get to somebody's tour and say, hey, can I open up for you and sing my one song? And I also, so I'll sing my one song, my Already No song, and then I'll cover, like, three other songs. So, give me, like, four songs. It's like 10, 15 minutes or whatever. I'm like, girl, get on somebody's tour and be an opening act, okay? Push that song. Push that song. Anyway, but, you know, she wants Ralph to be like the leading man in the song. He say, look, if Ralph not in shape, if his body ain't right, and I'm like, first of all, and that's her husband, whatever his body is, that's what should be right. Even, why he got it? Why can't he... Why can't we have a plump person? Why can't it be a big teddy bear dude? Okay, see y'all some haters. You know what I'm saying? Whatever rock body is, that should be good enough for the shoot. That's what she married to. Anyway. But he said if Ralph not in shape, if his body not ready, they'll have to cast somebody to play the leading man because it's supposed to be somebody sexy. See? Shade all up and through. Okay, now that was the first of all. People be saying Drew not no actress or whatever. Drew has acted and stuff for years. She may not be a big known actress for big roles, but she's been actively acting in things over the years. So, like, put some respect on Drew's name. You know, put some respect on her name. I mean, just a little bit. Anyway, uh, after a little video rehearsal or whatever, you know, Ralph stopped by, okay, because the dude who they had hired to be the main person, he double booked. He can't make it. So now Ralph will be in the video, okay, and whatnot, and they was dancing or whatever. Look, Drew say, look, at the end of the day, me and Ralph, we had 99 problems, okay, but one of them is not our chemistry. Meaning they round here bumping uglies, okay, they round here having sex. Okay, so that means Drew and Ralph have no issues being sexually attracted to each other and doing the do. Okay, the issue is Drew, your husband, can't be trusted. You know what I'm saying? We still wonder where was he at in Tampa? Okay, so you know, a lot of folks be married and their issue don't be, you know, the chemistry. Okay, the tension of wanting to do it. That don't ever be the issue. Okay, we see y'all have a good, you know what I'm saying, connections of the nether regions, but do you trust him on a Tuesday at a titty ball? No. Anyway, um, <laughs> do you trust him on a Tuesday at a titty bar? I promote this stuff. We see Kenya. 
Okay, and Kenya has went to see her doctor. Kenya is a hey Siri. How old is Kenya Moore? Lord is twenty six years old. Oh, I said Kenya Moore. See, that's the wrong phone. See, I asked the wrong phone. I could have asked my black male phone. See, I asked the white woman phone, and she messed up. Hey Siri, how old is uh -huh. Kenya? How old is Kenya Moore? Kenya Moore is 52 years old. So, yeah, you had to ask a black man. Okay, Kenya's 52. She's a woman of a particular age. So, I feel like we know some women can get pregnant and carry a child even in their 50s or above. It has happened. It's not, it's not regular. You know what I'm saying? We do know there have been many women across the world who have done it. However, Kenya's last pregnancy with Brooklyn was hard, okay? So she's coming to the doc doctor to discuss if she could carry another child because she wants to give Brooklyn, Brooklyn a sibling. Mark has other children. However, his kids have grown. They don't live in Kenya house. They're not going to be like regular come visit Brooklyn siblings. She wants her to have a playmate. I do feel like kids need siblings. You know what I'm saying? I do. I feel like, you know, because I'm, you know, I'm not an only child. Um, I have siblings. You know, I was raised with my, 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 my mom. I was raised with my sister and my brother, you know, come over on weekends and everything. So I feel like you know, I have a knowledge of being raised with siblings, so it's fun. Um, to not have siblings is crazy. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like if it's possible, if it's possible for people to give their child a sibling, give them a sibling. You know what I'm saying? Just you know, unless like if if uh if if Mark had kids around Brooklyn's age who she could bond with as she gets older, cool. But his kids, they're in the ground. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, she brings up how well, her and Mark, because uh, I feel like Kenya didn't, I don't, I'm, Kenya said when her and Mark signed like a contract or whatever, that if they ever broke up, got divorced, the embryos would, would belong to Kenya. So I'm feeling like because Kenya had trouble getting pregnant, they went through in vitro which means you have embryos, you know, you, they, they, you generate embryos or whatever, fertilizer, and they set up in the, in the freezer. So I'm, I'm assuming that's what they were able to do, and that's how she got Brooklyn. And it makes sense that she said, I, I think most people should do this anyway, because we've heard, like, I think it was, I think Sofia Vergara, the actress, who had embryos with a, a boyfriend or a husband some at the time. And when they broke up, it was a huge issue about what to do with them because they had no agreement on what would happen if they broke up. So I feel like it was smart for King to say, yeah, when we went to the to the, the, the sperm bank, was it the sperm bank, the in vitro place or whatever, the egg place or whatever, when we did our contract with them and the contract is stated, if something happens with us, they're my embryos, meaning I can do what I want to do with them, and you can't stop me. I don't need your permission. So I like the fact that she brought up how that was in the contract when they did it, you know, years ago. And now her and Mark are not together, and so she's like, I know I would have to have a conversation with him about it. You know what I'm saying? So he's aware. She said, because no one wants to no one signs up to have different fathers of their kids. You know what I'm saying? And so if I have the embryos and I'm not in a serious relationship, like why would I not give Brooklyn a sibling? I fully get that. I think it's smart. I think more more people should have that conversation. Like, okay, we're together now. And we are fertilizing these embryos now. We plan to be together because we're doing this. However, if we break up, who makes the decisions on the embryos? And it was Kenya, too. So, you know, she talked about how hard her pregnancy was, you know, how, you know, she didn't think at time that Brooklyn, Brooklyn would be carried for a term. So her pregnancy was very depressed. She was very sad because she kept going to doctor appointments and things kept going wrong. 
Um, and so she was scared. So again, that's what it was. And the doctor was like, well, look, you know, your pregnancy, your delivery was the, one of the scariest things I've seen in my 30 odd years of being a doctor. So you putting yourself at risk of dying is not worth the risk. One, your age has all these extra factors because you had such a hard pregnancy the first time. We don't know how lucky you would get the second time. You know, her C-section, you know, they said a C-section usually takes about 30 minutes. Hers took over two hours. She lost a lot of blood. She almost died. So she's like, your first pregnant. Can you can you and the doctor were both were saying how traumatic it was? And how it's a real conversation about she could die if she tried to carry, you know, her own child again. And, you know, she said she does not know about even um, surrogacy. Like, I don't know if I'm going to do that. I feel like <sighs> Kenya wants to carry and be pregnant again, but she recognizes that she could die if she does it. I think that's why she probably said, like, I don't know about surrogacy. I really would like for her to go talk to Candy or just talk to different people who use a surrogate. Um, to see because I feel like if you really want Brooklyn to have a sibling and you don't want to adopt and you do have embryos and you you already have to deal with Mark in general. So why waste embryos if you can get a surrogate to carry, you know, full term and let that be that? So I don't know. We shall see. Okay. Now, we see uh, Sonya, or Sanya, and uh, um, girl, what's the girl name? Sheree at the cryotherapy place. Okay, where the temperature gets below, below, uh, I think it's negative two twenty. I said negative two twenty degrees. I said bitches freeze. Okay, I was bored. I was bored watching them talk. It was real simple. You know what I'm saying? Sanya brings up how Ross is always in Texas. And because, he, as she said, the business is booming in Texas. Okay, it's real, real great. And Trail said, oh, my God, don't tell me you move back. Girl, we don't care. We don't care. What's we don't care. Okay. She said, no, you know, Ross wants to bring it here to Atlanta or whatever. I'm like, whatever. And she also wrote up how, you know, they're trying to get pregnant, but Ross always gone. So, you know what I'm saying? It's the whole thing. With him being gone, you know, she ain't knocked up. Now, side note. Side note. Um, Sonya was on Watch What Happens Live tonight. And for some reason, I was watching it because I was really watching it because, you know, I'm nosy. And I was like, why is Sonya in like really, really loose fitting? Like she was in, like in a very loose fitting, flowy dress. And I was like, she usually be wearing real form fitting clothes, you know? I was like, why is she, did she work out? How long she pregnant? So I'm not saying she pregnant. I'm not saying she looked pregnant. I'm not saying I saw a baby bump. All I'm saying is, as I was watching, watch what happens live. Okay. As I was watching, watch what happens live. Like this, I was like, that's a very loose dress. Cause when she sits down, you could you couldn't see her body at all. It was very, very big and bellowy or whatever. And I was like, she never really dressed like that. So I went to her page and I was like, you know, usually, you know, she just be like her belly, you know, her body. Body. Okay. I'm like, usually. She in something that show off, you know, her slim trim physique. But you know what I'm saying? I've 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 never seen her dressed in something that does not show off her slim trim body. I've never seen her in any interview in nothing. Even look, even if she wearing some kind of sweater, you can still see her whole body. All I'm saying is, even if she's in all black. You can still see her shape. Okay. All I'm saying is, I was like, well, you know, maybe 
that day she didn't want to wear nothing form fitting. I said maybe that day she wasn't about showing off her slim trim with it. I said maybe that day, you know, she wanted to be real, real fancy, like or whatever. She did not want anything um, you know, sitting on her, she said, you had a burger, she didn't want to bloat it, okay, maybe her uh, other dress got, um, covered up somewhere else, I said, I don't know, I said, maybe she just did not want to show off nothing, okay, I said, maybe it just wasn't what it was, I just had to ask myself, and I went to her, pay. I'm like, I'm looking at her, and I'm like, you'll see whatever she wear, it's, it's just, it's form-fitting, it shows that she's a very slim trim athlete athletic body okay slim trim still you know what I'm saying she always into her fitness okay I'm just saying I'm not pointing no fingers I ain't calling nobody fat I ain't body shaming I ain't trying to push a pregnancy on nobody but as I'm watching the episode of her saying we trying to get pregnant. We trying to get pregnant. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. But why she on Watch What Happened Live? Okay. Was this how she was pregnant? Yeah, that was how she was pregnant, you know, with her baby a long time ago. Okay. My point is, okay, my point is, as I'm still scrolling and showing y'all all the times we see her and when she wearing stuff, even, even if her arms and legs covered, you still see her. She, we ain't never. We ain't never. We ain't never. We ain't never. This may be the only time. And even this still shows what slim trim body. I'm just, I, I'm not saying nothing. Besides the fact that, you know, it was just slim and trim. That's all it was. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And when I saw her sitting there, I said, okay. She's sitting there, and with, why they will not show her whole thing, her sitting there. But I'm like, this, what she had on, you you couldn't see, you couldn't see nothing. You know what I'm saying? You, you couldn't see nothing. And that's all, okay? That's it. So, I don't know, but if come reunion time, she said, oh, I'm pregnant. I'm going to say, I told y'all. I told y'all. Because what we don't never see, we don't never see her anything. I'm just saying. Anyway. Trey brings up <laughs> how crazy it was at Courtney's little uh, escape room event or whatever, and how she came to the whole fight with Kenny and Marlowe. And they're like, we don't know why Drew left. Why did Kenny leave? Why did why did Mayetta leave? You know, why did they leave this with the Kenny left? I said, Sheree and Sai like the group is divided. It's divided. I'm like, it's not divided. But people don't like Marlowe. People who have had a direct conflict situation with Marlo left. If you at an event, and let's be clear, nobody really knows Courtney. Even though Drew Carr, cousin Courtney, you don't know that lady. So Drew, who has who has had conflict with Marlo, left. Kenya, who has had conflict with Marlo, left. Monietta, who has had conflict with Marlo, left. Candy, who has had conflict with Candy left. Had Marlo left, the other ones maybe would have stayed. Y'all again chose what? The wrong side. So whatever. So the group ain't divided. People who don't fuck with Marlo left. Period. So Sheree brings up she wants to have a brunch. So all the ladies can be Gucci. I'm like, that's a, I'm like it's gonna be the so Gucci brunch. We can all wear Gucci. Girl, Sheree is the only person on a nationally uh, syndicated TV show who is not promoting nothing she doing. She went to that damn warehouse one time for that no by Sheree that we don't never see anybody wearing. And she ain't said this is the girl by anyway. Um, so I, I just want candy. I want to meet with candy first before we go to brunch, whatever. I want to talk with, I think the issue is really how Drew and Kenya told uh, Candy, you know, what happened. You know what I'm saying? I think that's the issue. It's how they told her what Marlo said. Because I feel like Marlo has a valid point in how she feel. And Drew and Kenya, you know, was the wrong people to tell Candy. I said, bitch, what? That's that bullshit. 
it can't possibly be that Marlo is on some complete bullshit that Candy don't like. It, excuse me. It can't be. It, no, it, it has to be that Candy took it wrong. Marlo can't act. Marlo can't be wrong. Oh, Kenya and Drew have to set it wrong. I was like, no. Candy feeling what Marlo is on is some bullshit is about. And the fact that you don't know what Marlo said to Drew and what uh, and what Sheree said to Kenya, the fact that Sheree could not even really Sheree did not even really know what Marlo was saying. So you want to put it on everybody except Marlo Sheree. That's what we call flip-flopping, wrong team picking, we don't like you right now, get out our face, ass person. Okay? And to me, Sonya is digging a whole hole for herself with Candy, with Kenya, and the fans. Mainly because, not because she has to be team Candy, but because she's always, always ignoring Marlo's bullshit and blaming everybody else except Marlo. She wants to validate Marlo's feelings, but not Candy feelings. Because what Candy was told is what Marlo has been saying. She's been saying different things to everybody. And it's catching up with her ass. That's why her story kept changing. Okay, girl, bye. You can't, anybody who keeps validating Marlo and her BS is stupid. And I feel like the fact that she's seen some of the episodes and in her interviews, she's still back in Marlo. I'm like, bitch, you just wrong team. Wrong team. Anyway, we see Marlo having dinner with Corey. And I was like, not two people I don't like at the same time. Okay. I'm like, Jesus, no. Now, a couple things. Because I'm not gonna be long on this on this BB right here. One, I'm gonna start getting my margaritas and wine glasses. <laughs> because I think it will make them easier to drink. I the little small glasses or whatever, I always glad I have big boobs. I'm always trying to tilt it so I don't feel it on my boots, okay? I'm going to start saying, can I get my margarita in a wine glass? Thank you very much, okay? Because it's cute. So kudos to Marlo for that tip. Bougie at Marlo. Anyway, two, I don't care about Marlo one on a date. I don't give no fucks. Not one, not two, not three, or four, okay? Zero fucks is what I give. Three. Okay, three. I love that Courtney asked Marlo, why did you never address your issue with Candy before? Because the gotcha is, I don't think Courtney, well, no, Courtney was there because Courtney was full of shit. When she said, I would be, I would say con- con- uh, uh, um, condolences. I would say you want some, whatever, whatever. But, she like, you know, why didn't you ask her or, or address it with her before? So kudos to Courtney for, for one time on this show, not irking my nerves. Okay? I may be able to tolerate your ass on a Tuesday or something. I don't know. Four. Marlo's a liar. <laughs> because her response to, to Courtney was, well, I, I haven't seen her. Bitch, what? Now, speak on it. Speak on it. Candy showed they saw each other at BravoCon. So the same way in the first episode, they're discussing BravoCon and Mama Joyce being messy. They're discussing the, the, the pow pow at Blaze. You want us to believe you had not seen Candy, but you had seen Candy. Yeah, you had seen Candy. Marlo waited to make this an issue. She did. Marlo waited to make it an issue. And you can't tell me no different, okay? Because she lying when she said, I didn't, I didn't see her. But the matter of fact is, you had two years. You have seen Candy on numerous occasions over the past two years. If you was mad, if your family was so pissed then, as you like to say, my it was so sick. They were so bad. My family was so upset, you know. They was like, you know, where Candy at? You know, if Candy would, when she, when Marlo said, if Candy had been there for me more when my nephew died, it would have made me and her closer. 
but it made us grow apart. I say, what? 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 She then said, I just expected Candy to ask for my sister number to call her. I said, bitch, what? Bitch, what? <laughs> you wanted Candy to call you and ask you for your sister number to call her because the nephew Candy did not know that? Shut up! That is so stupid! <laughs> Shut up! That is so stupid! I'm like, what are you talking about? Girl! Get away from me with this. Because it's stupid. Okay? I mean, look, did the other housewives call your sister? Did any other housewife call your sister? Did any other employer of your nephew call your sister? Did the landlord of the house he rented that he was killed in, did the landlord call your sister? Did 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 anybody did, did Andy call your sister? Did Nini call your sister? Did your parole officer call your sister? Cause you, did anybody call her or does it was Candy? It was Candy. Did, did Sheree call your sister? Hmm. Hmm. Why did Candy have to call your sister and by their nephew? that you did not even know work at her restaurant for two days in 2020. And two more days in 2021. I'm sorry, for two, for two days in 2019 and two days in 2020. The delusions of it is stupid. The, again, Marlo around here and she keeps moving the goalposts about why she... Why did this, I expect her to call my sister? Why? Do she know your sister? Get out of my fucking face, Milo. Okay. Now, we then see Candy talking to Sonya at OLG. Okay, a little conversation. Okay. Now, Candy, like, look, I was having fun living high off of my uh, the success of the piano lesson, you know what I'm saying? The, the play we had going on, whatever. I had to come back here. And deal with y'all be of the S, okay? In the ghetto, as your friend Courtney like to say, okay? I was like, it's some be of the S. And I'm also about done with you, Sanya. I'm about done with you, too. What did I do, Candy? I didn't do nothing. I, I'm innocent. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. And she said, look, you out here, like, I feel like you ride the friendship fence. And said, I don't like it. Now, again... For me, I feel like Sonya not a good friend <laughs> at all. And for her to say, well, I don't want to get burned with the ladies because of any issues that y'all have with Marlo. Just because I'm friends with Marlo. You know, I don't want y'all to feel like, you know, I'm not a good friend just because I'm her friend. And I say, Sonya, you don't. No one cares that you're friends with Marlo. Mm -mm. No. The issue is Marlo be doing some ragtag bush and you don't call her out on it. You make excuses for why she does it and you try to make everybody else feel like, well, you should forgive Marlo. Well, Marlo, no. And that's not when you are a neutral person, you can't keep picking sides and you always pick Marlo's side. And you want everyone else to feel for Marlo. No. First of all, you just met them. Like, ain't this her second season? You just met them last season. You don't know any of them so tough to keep picking Marlo's sides. And then make it seem as if everybody else is wrong. Which validates Marlo. And it keeps up Marlo's delusions. That's my issue. And when Candy like, look, you, I feel like you, like you play down what she do, and and it annoys me. I like that Candy is being honest about her issue. It's not about you being her friend. When she do BS, you you play it down as if it's nothing. But if somebody else do something, you have a big, big, a bigger issue. That's that bullshit. That's called flip flopping. Okay, 
She's like, Marla would do stuff and say stuff and then and then say sorry, but she'll keep doing it over and over, whatever. And it's like you don't see that she do that, and it's some bullshit. I don't like it. Okay. Well, well, Mar- well, well, you know, what Marlo said to me is not what they told you. You're right. Drew told Candy what Marlo told her. You weren't there. Kenya told Candy what Sheree told her. You weren't there. So you trying to make it seem like Drew and, Ken- and Kenya was lying, and it wasn't. You were not there, ma'am. She told you something different, ma'am. That's part of the issue. Marlo Freud kept changing. The goalposts kept moving. Each time she talked to somebody different, you know what I'm saying? She wants attention because she's fake. Okay. And then I loved that Candy got sentimental in a way. You know what I'm saying? By saying, I'm not. The sentimental fan because she was crying. You know what I'm saying? Look, I'm not, the, you know what I'm saying? Her phone was she's like, Look, I'm not the sentimental friend. That's not me. And she was crying and she was saying it. She was like, You know what I'm saying? My brother died when I was 15 years old and I'm not the sentimental girl. You know what I'm saying? I had to push back that because I know that life goes on. And on her speak on it, she was like, The day her brother died, she was 15, the next day she went to school. She said she kind of just pushed her from the die because like I did not want to be at home, just crying. I think candy, people don't understand everybody handles death differently. And I speak from the point of like when my dad died, like I have no visible memory of seeing my sister or my brother crying. Me, on the other hand. I was an emotional wreck. And I'm not saying they did not cry, but we just all handled it differently. Like, my sister was like a rock, a strong rock. You know what I'm saying? So, we all handle grief differently. Like, my sister is not the sentimental person. She isn't. But that does not mean that she don't care. She just handles things differently. And we know that. Because I've been raised for like 41 years. You know what I'm saying? And kids, like, you know, Marlo knows that's not me. I have a friend who, <laughs> in life, every time something happened in our in our friend group, we knew you can't call her. You can't call Pumpkin. She not that friend. If you want to laugh, nope, that's her. She's not the friend you call because you have to know who your friends are, and that does not mean they don't care about what you're going through because they do. But you can expect them to be this emotional, sentimental. That ain't who she is. And Candy's point was, that's not who I am. And everybody who know me know that. She said, Marlo know that. And she kept bringing it up as if I did something to her. And she did. Marlo talked as if Candy did something wrong. And she didn't. Candy did not do anything to Marlo. Candy is who we cannot place our expectations on other people. As if they don't do what we expect them to do, then they're wrong. Especially if you know that ain't the kind of person they is. You know who to call for certain things. You don't call Candy if you need some of them shit. She, we, we've seen that over the years. You know what I'm saying? Like, I am uh, I am my motivational friend. I try to help my friends out and, and show them ways to do things. Like that's the kind of friend I am. I'm not the I'm not the sentimental friend. I respect her for saying that because her point also when people bury their emotions like that is to protect themselves. Because she has such a hard loss at such a young age, she's protecting herself. And it is not her job to have to be the system of the friend if that is not who she is. And we have to stop putting these expectations on our friends. I don't do that with my people. I know who to call if I'm sad. I know who will really be there for me if I have a death in my family. And I'm not offended if a friend I have don't send flowers. First of all, fuck them flowers. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? I feel like if, if they say, hey, I'm so sorry to hear that, Candy hugs her and they talk. So what the what, what else did you want? Again, bullshit. So she's like, I get it, you know, but I'm trying to stop the group from being divided. When Candy said, well, first of all, that's because we see Marla, we, we see Marla with the fool, but y'all keep over there playing with her, and that's why y'all think it's divided. And it's not, I say it's not divided, it's not divided. People who don't fuck with Marlo is not fucking with Marlo. It's that's it's not a divide. Marlo is the issue. Period. Okay. And she then said she's gonna have the, the the Gucci event for Sheree or whatever. And they want Candy and Marlo to be Gucci. And Candy said, um, I feel like to y'all, if you see me in the streets, nigga, you don't know me. Okay, I, not at all. Get out my face. Okay. So we have the brunch, okay. The brunch comes along and we see a little sitting chart, okay? But first, but first, I need y'all to go ahead and like the video. liking is the thing to do okay now first you know it's even i i could not i did not feel like getting individual looks everybody came with some kind of gucci okay the only person i thought i was confused about was really marlon kenya's but kenya was like because kenya was in a white suit and she said it was gucci but it did not have like the gucci print and she said she don't like you know the big logo stuff so she like to wear a little regular a regular gucci uh, suit but had her Chanel bag. I think I'm not liking it. Um, and then Marlo, I just did not like Marlo outfit. I think the best dress was Sonya. And um, I love Sonya's uh, suit, the Gucci suit. And I love Drew's outfit. You know what I'm saying? Looks sporty or whatever. Uh, Courtney came and this, I did the Gucci shoes and the Gucci purse. You know, Candy was a Gucci suit. I'm just saying. Okay. Seating chart. So at first, Sheree was like, you think everybody be speaking for everybody. So I want to spread us, spread us out. So no one's like sitting with like someone who's gonna like speak for them. I'm like, bullshit. You put Marlo in between you and Sanya, and y'all are her main mouthpieces. You put Candy on the corner away from everybody who she no. Sheree, you ain't you ain't fooling me. You ain't fooling me. You know, and when Candy walked in and sat down, she realized that Marlo's play setting was next to Sanya. It's too close to me. Move it. She's like, uh, Sheree, switch Kenya and um and Marlo. I, no, ma'am. Mm -mm. And so they switched over. This made more sense to me, but I feel like no matter where you have someone sitting, they can they gonna say whatever. You know what I'm saying? I say whatever. Anyway, so everybody here. Okay. Uh, I'm like, whatever. He goes, Trey, I love all of y'all. I have a love for all of y'all. You know what I'm saying? I, and it hurts me that y'all can't move. I'm like, why are you crying? Girl, where's Martel? He he, he ain't there no more? Y'all ain't dating no more? Nothing? Okay, anyway, you don't think that tears. But I just need y'all to kind of get a lot of ones to have fun. They do have fun with Marlon not being... This is the issue. Marlo tries to connect a shooting to Candy. That's the issue. Boom. Okay. It could have been fun until that. So why is no one saying, Marlo, you and this thing between you and Candy, you know, let's let what did you trying to say? Because you told me this, you told them that. If everybody said what Marlo told them, each of them would have a different story. But no, Sheree and Celia trying to help that helper. And trying to make it seem as if everybody being the body is if no, it, they don't fuck with Marlo. Y'all could have fun if it wasn't for Marlo. Anyway, they start with Candy and, and Courtney. It was real easy. You know what I'm saying? It was real easy. Because mainly, Courtney, like, all right, you know what I'm saying? It's cool. They squat their beef. You know what I'm saying? Courtney basically apologized for like being extra, or whatever. They both said they both said how it was a big misunderstanding. Um, that she was happy that Candy came to the the, um, the skate room event because that was her olive branch to Candy, and how 
you know, she came out and checked on Candy, whatever. So they, they both smiled about it, said it ain't no big issue, whatever. It, they both agreed that the initial argument was some bullshit or whatever. So they're 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 good. They're Gucci. Okay. Do I like Courtney now? No. Courtney to me came on here acting like somebody. I don't know who. She's too extra for me. She's too and she's too animated. And I feel like we only get the real her. Like when she was sitting up there talking to Marlo, it felt a bit real. But all the oh, oh, this girl, calm. She came, she came in like a fan. Oh, hey, hey, girl, no, don't do that. So if she can act less like a fan, I might like her in two, three years. Okay. Anyway, now Sanya then wants to address Kenya. And I say, well, where does this come from? How does this happen? What's going on here? Okay. Now, Senya says she feels like her and King, her King was like growing, growing a friendship, whatever. I've been a good friend to you. I've been building a bond with you, but I feel like you that do the same. And that Ross party was a bit off or whatever. Then in Birmingham, you told me that I, I did not have to go. I did not have to come back. I was like, girl. <sighs> When Kenya said, look, we were building a bond, a friendship, okay? But, you know, I don't fully trust you, okay? You would call me, and we were talking about you doing some promotion or whatever. You then went on a little show and talked shit about me, and I was offended. Now, we see that she was on Watch What Happened Live, and when, was asked, when she was asked if she agreed with Marlo that Kenya but is fake, she kind of in a shady way agreed. It wasn't major shade, but it was still like shady. Whereas she wouldn't say that about Marlo. If someone said, You think Marlo's books are fake? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think so. Like what she said was like, Oh, well, you know, when Marlo points it out, you know, and if you look at it, it do it do look like it's fake, but I don't know. So she kind of agreed with Marlo and Kenya felt like, you know, you a friend wouldn't do that. And I, I agree. I do. I feel like it wasn't a big issue, but I get Kenya's point. But I also get how Sheree, how Sheree, how Senya felt like, well, I don't know if your butt is real. You know what I'm saying? I, what was I supposed to say? And when Sheree then said, you you say that, that you don't know. If you don't, they said you don't know, leave it at that. But it was the extraness of the whatever that made it supposed to find a way. And in the, in the, in the confession, she said, I, I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't know. On why for that last she, I, it could be. I don't I don't I don't uh feel bad for saying it. I'm my girl, whatever. So, you know, they talking or whatever, and then she's like, look, um, what did she say? Oh, well, not with Marlo, I don't, you know, talk about you. You know what I'm saying? I just want to hurt it. I want us to be cool. And I feel like it's not that I don't think can you feel like when you're with Marlo, you talk about me. I think our point is. When you're with Marlo, you allow her to talk about me. And that's like, can't nobody talk about my friends in front of me. It, it ain't going to happen. You, you leave us out. So I think our point is, you and Marlo, you know, you allow Marlo to talk about me in front of you. And you laugh. The same we see uh, uh, Sanya laugh with Sheree and Courtney about, about Candy. Sheree, not good, not Sheree, Sanya. Sanya don't know how to not be involved in the shady conversations about people she wants to be cool with. I can't watch you on camera laughing at my expense if we friends. That ain't how it go. It isn't. Um, like not what people you know I'm kind of at odds with, so I don't I don't like that. Okay. But her and Sher- her, 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 uh Sanya and can you agree? To you know, see how things go. King said, "I I gotta see how you move. I have to see if this, if, <laughs> if you're worth it." I said, "Girl, can you be messy?" You know, I think this issue is not a big issue, but I also feel like Sanya is new. But she the same thing she did with Drew is what she's doing with Kenya. You feel like, okay, we cool, we friends, 
but you then have a small issue. And when they say, well, no, this is why I feel that way, she still make it seem as if she don't know why. Girl, flip flopper. Flip flopper. We then get to, to uh, Marlo and Candy. Now, in my opinion, I do not want King, uh, Candy to forgive Marlo. I want her to stay on the boat of putting Marlo on a boat century. You know what I'm saying? And what Marlo said, well, look, I'm in a great place, you know, and I can respect all the late lies. Marlo's saying she respects everyone is alive from the pits of hell. You hear me? She's like, when I was talking with Drew, you know, I was saying that I expected a different reaction from a friend of 10 plus years. You know what I'm saying? That I can't make someone like me. And King said, well, you can't make anyone like you if you keep attacking someone. Okay, no one will like you if you're being evil. <laughs> oh, my God. And Mark, look, first of all, you know what I'm saying? Look, I'm being genuine. You know, I can be respectful. Okay? And I'm like, girl, what? What? <laughs> As Marlo was talking, Kenya starts fake choking. Ugh. Ugh, sorry. Some bullshit caught my throat. <laughs> Sheree giving her the highlight. I'm like, girl, hilarious. Okay? But, girl, um, A little water under my throat. See, I'm trying to choke myself too. Anyway, um, Candy and Key Point is you're not being genuine. You're not. Okay. And when Candy said at the end of the day, no one here would appreciate their name being attached to a murder. And that's essentially what Marlo did. The stuff she said to people in scenes, in conjunction with the stuff she's been saying in the confessional. She wholeheartedly was trying to attach Candy to her nephew's death. Wholeheartedly. Now, is Marlo just too stupid to understand what she's been doing? It's very possible. But she's also aware of what she's been doing. You know what I'm saying? And then she's like, look, I didn't bring up the shooting. Drew did. I was like, what? No. Marlo had discussed it. Before that night at Drew's, um, at that uh, winery thing, Marlo had been bringing it up before then. She wanted other folk to bring it up too. Drew did bring it up that night. However, the whole thing came after that, your argument with Drew, and which when Candy was the one and my nephew working her thing and chink, all this stuff. So, it's not as if no one talked about it until Drew did. You have already brought it up. So, girl, bye. The whole time, Drew, like, don't put me your lies. Don't do that because that ain't what happened. You were trying to, now Drew was trying to say what what, what Marta was saying, but it was to a noise. Yeah, uh, can't, you're not candy. She like the lies, the lies. The, it's a lot going on. Between King saying it's a lie, Drew saying it's a lie, Marta was talking bullshit or whatever. But Candy, Candy, can we you go talk? Can we stand up and talk? And Candy like, no, no, you don't need to do that. No, no. All I said was I didn't get flowers. No, we've seen you say more. We've seen you say more, and you're acting as if we didn't see it. Okay, and Candy like, look. At the end of the day, I hate that you're using this as a story. Your family gonna sit on TV is some bullshit. Okay, and then Sheree like, I can't believe King and Drew. Won't let Marlo talk. You know, Candy always have folks talk with her. I'm like, everybody there talk with everybody. It's weird to me that they can try to talk for Marlo to get Candy to get her point. But the minute that, that Sheree, well, not Sheree, girl, too many people, the minute that Candy has Kenya or Drew speaking up because they also don't like Marlo lying or just don't like Marlo. Kenya do not like Marlo. She going to give it her every chance she got. You hear me? Every chance she got. So we can't make it seem that the only reason Drew and Kenya are speaking up towards Marlo based on Kenya. They also don't rock with her. They also had issues with her. Cut it out. You and Sia doing the exact same thing 
for Marlo. The fuck? What? So Marlo gets pissed. She gets up and she leaves. She leaves out of whatever. Oh my, Kenya's so disrespectful. I could not. She's so disrespectful. Shrago follows her outside. She's like, look, come in and just talk to Candy. Don't talk to anybody else or whatever. Inside, Candy sent to everybody else. Marlo tries to play victim. Okay? She would act out, then blame somebody else for her trauma, her actions, and I'm tired of that shit. I'm tired. Tired. Drew and uh, Kenya said, I agree. It's the same. They, they all tired of her. Kenya then said, Marlo has no loyalty. The bitch saw the pussy boy, but I said, what? Wait, what? When Kenya said, Marlo sold her cooch for a bag. I said, a bag? What kind of bag was it? I mean, did it happen? So, Sheree come back in with Marlo. Kenya, can you please let Marlo, you know, talk to Candy without you talking? Okay, cool. Fine. I don't care. Marlo say, my nephew's death had nothing to do with you. But my family felt like you should have called. I'm like, man, your family. I don't know them. They don't know me. And even on speaker, the kid said, I've had many people die over the years. My wife never sent flowers. She never came and consoled me about anybody in my family. What the fuck? What the fuck? You hear me? Okay. And she said, you know, my family felt like, you know, you didn't call, so that meant you didn't give a fuck or whatever. I, what? You didn't get, you you didn't give, um, you, it's weird that she's telling, the fact that they expect Candy to, like, put some money on it, and that's the only way to show your condolence. I'm like, no, bitch, not at all. So, say you then trying to explain to Candy, well, what Marlo meant was, you know, Kenny, you're focused on the wrong thing. You're focused on something that isn't the issue. Kenny said, I don't need you being my little lawyer, okay? I don't need you to me anything. Thing. You know, fuck her flowers. Fuck Marlo. Fuck the flowers she was expecting to get. I don't care. You're using this to get sympathy with yourself, and it should be about the family, not you. Fuck the flowers. I was like, absolutely. And say you're trying to browbeat Candy, to get Marlo's point, it's dumb because candy feelings are just as valid as Marlo's. Marlo 100% tried to use this against candy. Tried to say, I was triggered because Drew didn't say shooting. It triggered me. And I remembered I had been mad for two years. When Candy said, not Candy, Marlo said, I'll get you gifts. I'll be talking to you. Candy said, girl, you try to drag me every chance you get. Marlo then said, you know what? You are a different breed. You are a selfish, spoiled, privileged girl. Again, I'm happy that Candy still don't fuck Marlo. Okay? I love it. Because usually she forgives folks. I'm happy that she's not letting up. She's not allowing Marlo to browbeat her and to forgive me because you can't use my name for clout, bitch, on the show that you just came on on SP Total. And now I've been here 14 seasons. You can't do that. Not at all. And on speaking of that, when Candy said Sheree, not Sheree, she said that uh, Saya wants to um, say that she see me and Kenya off the show, girl, the fans don't like you, basically, what you said, okay? If anyone the fans want off the show, it's you. I say, I, I fully agree. I fully agree. This cast, because even when, 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 jo, when Jamie asked Candy, who would you want gone from the show, whatever, she said, I would never have said to take folks away. I was saying add people more. Now, in my opinion, Marlo got to go. Okay, I'm saying. But she also said, I've never, she said, I've only said there's one person I would not feel with faith. There's one person I would not feel with, but I've never stopped anybody else from being 
even if I don't like you, I don't have to not want you on the show. I only said it for one person. That's it. I don't want that nobody bad. Okay, that's it. So I feel like she don't even care. Candy is fully at the I don't care about Marlo. I'm gonna keep the same energy, and I cannot wait for the reunion. You hear me? It's gonna be amazing, amazing. Yeah. Anyway, y'all. It is 3 42 in the morning. <laughs> I'm gonna go to bed. Um, please make sure that you have already subscribed to my channel, like the video, comment it in the comment section. Okay, I will be live tonight at 9 p.m. for a guys of chat of some sort. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, like the video, comment, subscribe, share, follow me on social media at Daily's Corner. Boom, over here. Mm -hmm. Daily's Corner and stuff. Okay. Good time to have by all. I will talk to y'all later on. Again, happy Juneteenth. Let's go. Bye.